Hello there, my name is Dr Liam Highland and I am an equity doctor based at a GP practice in Nottingham. I'm doing this video here today for MCS Projects Limited, specifically John Waterworth, who is the project manager for Medical Days and Science and Technology Challenge Days. John, thank you very much for allowing me to be part of this experience and passing on uh, tips, advice and any other words of wisdom to prospective medical students and doctors. So just to further elaborate on my introduction, as I said, I'm a, I am a foundation year two doctor uh, based on my first rotation at a GP practice in Nottingham. My uh, following two rotations are general surgery and endocrinology and diabetes medicine. I shall be finishing my F2 year in August of 2021. And just to briefly explain, the foundation training programme is made up of two years, foundation year one, foundation year two. After foundation year two, it is recommended that's when you then progress on to specialty training. So, John, you very kindly sent me some questions, which, as I said, I'm more than happy to answer. So first question is, what if you make a mistake? So within the medical field itself, uh, you can make a mistake at any point in time. We all do at one point in time, whether it be one mistake or multiple mistakes. So in the span of first year medical student all the way up the consultant uh, field, it can happen. Uh, my, main, my main message for answering this question is to say that when you do make a mistake, it's being able to recognise that you've made a mistake and more importantly, being able to admit when you've made a mistake. Admitting it not only to your colleagues or whoever else you're working with, but to admit it to patients as well, because more often than not, the mistakes you make will be um, tied in or involved with patient care. And I think it's it's a difficult thing to do but it's the right thing to do because um when you admit your mistake uh to the patient then they then are then able that they then are able to trust you more as uh the doctor and to be able to make sure that their um, centered approach to care is going to be um, good and followed through uh, as, you, as, as you carry on so being able to recognize and admit when you've made a mistake is important and then the third point which is probably even more, more important than the previous two is being able to learn from that said mistake uh, to make sure that that doesn't happen again in the future and uh, that's the main thing that um, doctors or higher levels in the medical field look for not to make sure that you don't make any mistakes because then you don't learn but it's to make sure that you do if you do make a mistake, you learn from it and it doesn't happen again. Uh, the second question is, when do you choose the area of medicine that you'll have a career in? Now, this is a question which um, is very dependent on each person as they go through a medical career. Some of those of you watching this video who are either at school in GCSE years or in A-level years at, at sixth form, you may already have an idea what particular specialty you might like to go down uh, in the medical field. Um, whether that be for some of you neurosurgery or cardiology or some of you might already think I want to be a GP so you can be thinking about that now already and that question of what specialty you'd like to go down is continually asked as you go through medical school throughout your five years. I would say the time when it becomes important for you to um, actually uh, apply for what specialty you want to go down uh, via the Oriel website is uh, done halfway through F2 year uh, that's when it's recommended that you apply for a specialty. Uh, with that being said, uh, more recently, within the last five to ten years or so, uh, a lot of doctors, particularly those in F2, so colleagues of mine, uh, are deciding that they want to go down uh, an F3 year, which is essentially like a gap year that you sometimes take before university. So in this regard, it's taking a year out before you go down any form of specialty training. And for some people, they may even take they may take an F3, an F4, even an F5 year, as many years as they want before specialty training. So uh, that is also a viable option that you can do. You don't have to go straight down specialty training straight after F2. Question three, have you had to work on shifts where there aren't enough doctors? Yes, definitely. Um, I wouldn't say it's been a frequent occurrence for myself, but um, it does happen. And I'd say more so when it comes to on-call shifts. So these are shifts whereby it's not your usual eight to four or nine to five shift. It's more your 12 hour day shifts or your 12 hour night shifts. And as much as at the start, as a doctor, you can become, at the start of the shift, you, be, you can become very um, angry, upset, 
disappointed even with the um, management staff, the admin staff, the roast coordinators, because they are the ones who are involved in making sure that there should be enough doctors on shift or staff on shift. Um, the best thing to do in that situation is just to crack on, knuckle down with whichever other members of staff that are there with you, make sure that you just collaborate and work well together as a team. And actually the shift itself will run a lot more smoothly and will sometimes run a lot quicker than anticipated. So it's just to not get too uh, bogged down or flustered with the fact that you've not got enough staff just to crack on, maintain that good quality, high clinical care and work well together as a team. Uh, question four, is it worth all the debt? Um, I, I would say yes, I suppose that has to be my answer, but personally, I, I would say it has been, it's been worth the debt. Um, five years of, of medical school, for most of you, six, if you decide to intercalate, you know, you learn the basic uh, ways of clinical practice, basic clinical skills, how to take a good effective history and how to perform basic blood taking, cannulation, catheters, etc. And I think as you progress on forward throughout your career, you use those skills more and more. And the overall uh, career projection of a doctor is that you are continually learning all the time. And I think that's um, a great thing to have in, in throughout life and in a career. So yes, I definitely say it's, it's worth the debt um, to make sure that you actually learn all those skills and you become the best clinical practitioner that you can. Uh, question five. Uh, the last one, which is kind of made up of a couple of parts. So please talk about three downsides of being a doctor and three upsides of being a doctor. So in terms of downsides, I would say um, the long hours is one. So as I've already alluded to, as a doctor, you work, as a, especially as a junior doctor, you will work on call shifts. Those be day shifts, they be night shifts, they be late shifts. Um, the hours are arduous. Um, they are unsociable sometimes. Um, you will lose sleep because of it. Um, it will uh, mess up every general pattern of life that you've gotten accustomed to already. Um, but it's worth it to be able to make patients better, to be able to work with such great colleagues, to, as I said, be learning things all the time. And uh, it's something which, I you know, dare I say, you do become accustomed to as you progress on. But yeah, there, there are long hours. Uh, second downside is dealing with difficult patients. Now, this may not just be patient, this could be relatives of patients, but any difficult scenario, whether it be a relative not happy with uh, a certain aspects of patient care, or whether it be to do with uh, a patient having died and you having to verify the death and then speak to the family afterwards about that. There's a multitude of situations where relatives and family um, and the patients themselves can get very irate. Um, being in a hospital is not a normal environment for anyone, so it is understandable. My advice would be in those situations to be as sympathetic and or empathetic as you possibly can. Understand their uh, predicament and their feelings and to not rise up to the situation in the same manner that they are presenting to you. To be cool, calm, collected and uh, to make sure that you are saying to them that you're, you know, you're providing the best possible care that they, that they can have listen to their concerns, try and rectify any that you might be able to. But um, yeah, it's, it's about remaining calm um, and being able to reflect on those situations as well. And then the final downside, I would say, is um, the lengthy amount of training time. So um, as I said, you have your five years of med school or six if you interconnate, and then you do two years of foundation training. And then let's say you want to go down and become a paediatrician. That can take up to nine years of training after that. So nine and seven, 16 years, so 16 years worth to become a consultant paediatrician. Most surgical specialties are about eight years. Uh, to be, if you want to become an obstetrician gynae consultant or doctor, that takes seven years. And then let's just say you want to be a GP, that's three years. And so um, multitude of different specialties, all of which have different um, specialty timeframes. Then um, finally, just to go over the three upsides, uh, or three upsides I personally feel of being a doctor. One, as I've said multiple times before, you're always learning, always learning new skills, uh, which I think is great. And the fact that you are in an environment where you can harness and employ those skills is even better as well. So yeah, that's definitely a good one. Uh, the second one I'd say is meeting uh, a vast array of interesting people. This could be patients, it could be relatives, it could be other doctors, nurses, healthcare staff. 
um, whether you're working in the hospital, whether you're working in the GP practice, whether you're working out in the community elsewhere, you're going to come across such a wide array of different people. And that helps you to not only become a better communicator, but helps you to become confident in dealing with any such situations. And, you know, you will come across some very um, uh, interesting stories from these people as well. And then my third and final upside, I would say, is that uh, as a doctor, as such, um, you, can, you can travel anywhere, essentially. Once you have been able to um, harness those skills of being a good clinical practitioner and employing them well, they are transferable anywhere in the world. And uh, again, the broader you go to employ those skills, the more experienced you become. Uh, and I think that's such a great thing for a career. So, yeah, those are my uh, answers to all the questions. Uh, I'd like to once again thank, thank you, John Waterford, for allowing me to be able to pass on these words of wisdom. And for those of you watching this video who are still thinking of going down a career in medicine, uh, best of luck and um, you won't regret it.